Way too many people are walking around wearing a mask they think is protecting them from disease or pollution, but they are really getting little or no protection at all. All they're really doing is wasting their money, creating skin irritation in many cases, and help worsening an already huge international garbage problem. These people are either wearing cloth or disposable surgical masks and respirators that are either unsealed, provide very limited filtering such as with cloth masks, or worn far too long until the electrostatic charge is eliminated by dirt or moisture since disposable masks are in constant contact with the skin. Tragically, they have a false sense of security. Conversely, there are only a handful of mask wearers who are properly protected. Those are the ones wearing quality filtering masks with high filtration of the most dangerous particles, hopefully with replaceable filters. They're wearing disposable masks which are disposed of daily, so they have not lost their electrostatic charge, a process performed by very few, if any. Unfortunately, these are creating additional garbage and need to change the mass to mass with replaceable filters. Finally, they're wearing masks tightly sealed to the face, which is very difficult to do with disposable surgical masks made with lightweight ear loops. The rest are all just wasting money and creating mountains of garbage. It's important to wear a mask that works to protect you against the hazards you are trying to protect against. Most people have no idea and think a mask is a mask. Wrong. Unfortunately, during COVID, there was a lot of conflicting, confusing, and quite frankly, bad information communicated to the public. No wonder they are making some bad decisions. The first step is for you to identify what hazards you're protecting yourself from and how big a particles are. I can tell you that the particles to be most concerned about are very small, no matter if you're hoping to protect from disease or pollution. Here are a few graphs and charts to help illustrate the size of the particles you may be trying to protect against and why a mask with high filtering capability to filter small particles with an electrostatic charge is important. In this graph, the red line indicates the 3 micron particle size that surgical masks are tested to, and the purple line the 0.3 micron particle size to which KN95 and other respirators are tested to. The hazards to the left of the red line are smaller than the filtration efficiency to which they are tested. Those particles are filtered to a much lower efficiency, if any. That also assumes that the masks have not been worn too long and the electrostatic charge is still working. If the filter has gotten dirty or moist, it won't be working as tested. Do you see any hazards left of the red line you may want to protect against or think you already are? I bet you probably do. If so, you should be using filters that pass KN95 tests and are still electrostatically charged. This image includes the same purple and red lines, but offers a little more illustration to the scale of the particles. At this scale, the human hair looks closer to the size of a rope. The point is that the particles you should be protecting against the most are also the smallest and require quality filters that are clean and maintain their electrostatic charge. Another issue to consider is how much of these hazards are in the air and for how long. Generally, when COVID-19 is transmitted between individuals at close range, the transmission is airborne. The closer to the expelled infectious particles an individual is, the higher the viral load they can receive. Also, the amount of time an individual is exposed to the infectious particles in the air can also significantly affect the risk of infection. Generally, larger droplets are less worrying than smaller droplets since they are only likely to pass on the infection at very close distances. This image shows how larger droplets in the 10 micron range 
discharge from talking, coughing, or sneezing, fall to the ground relatively quickly and would not travel far in the air, less than two meters. However, this image from a study published in the Journal of, Ameri of the American Medical Association found that under the right conditions, liquid droplets from sneezes, coughs, and just exhaling can travel more than 26 feet and linger in the air for minutes. According to a study by Johnson in 2011, during speech, particles of approximately 2 micron could remain airborne for dozens of minutes. Another study by Lindsay in 2012 found that patients infected with influenza particles in the range of 0.35 to 2.5 microns were of the highest concentration and remained airborne for dozens of minutes to several hours. This chart from First 10 EM references a prior study from the Journal of Hygiene that details the amount of particles in a cough or sneeze. As you can see, the quantity of small diameter particles are by far the most found in both a cough and a sneeze. Interestingly, the quantity found in sneezes is dramatically more than a cough. Remember that. So the next time you hear someone cough or sneeze, you should hope that they and you are properly masked. Fortunately, long-range transmission of COVID-19 is less frequent. The primary explanation of this is delusion. The farther away you are from someone talking, sneezing, or coughing, the more dilute aerosols become. The risk of aerosol transmission drops off incrementally with increasing distance. The importance of dilution of aerosols is evident in everyday life. You can smell cigarette smoke when you're standing, let's say, eight meters away from a smoker, but is nothing like the obnoxious fumes present if you're standing right next to them. Similarly, cigarette smoke is much worse indoors than outdoors. Imagine each smoke molecule was a virus. You are obviously at much higher risk one meter away than you are at eight meters away. Dilution doesn't prevent exposure to the virus, but it makes it less probable. Droplets dispersed at a long range hopefully are not as transmissible due to this dilution, but they are dispersing particles at a great distance that settle on surfaces and contamin contaminate us in that way. You know the old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. The bottom line is to do what we can, within reason, to protect ourselves and hopefully those around us if you are courteous. The bottom line is common sense avoidance of risk. Protection is about limiting risk by as many possible methods like masking, social distancing, vaccination, and hand washing. We can't always social distance and especially up to eight meters. So that's why we should wear a mask that is sealed, filters the small particles we're trying to protect against, is clean and still maintains its electrostatic charge, has a lanyard so you can take it off when not at risk, and then go about enjoying your normal life.